That's that's horrifying. Oh boy, that's horrifying even more. Yes, everyone hates that though. <laughs> Just going to give a couple minutes for people to come in. All right, I think it's a good time to t start. All right, I'm Aaron Honeycutt. I work at System76 as the happiness architect. I've been there roughly almost five years this year. And this will be my talk from the launch today on how we got there on open hardware. If it wants to work. There we go. So we'll be going over Theo, launch, how we're handling the software and firmware updates to be remaining open, as well as service manuals, attack doc, doc, docs on repairing your system and making yours, as well as there'll be an end where GitHub resources if you want to take out, look at the source code and play around with stuff. So we'll start with the Theo desktop. That's where we started on in-house design and assembly in the US. We start with all wood and metal built, bought from US in-house companies. 
to assemble it in the US. All the designs are on GitHub and OS HWA certified as well as GPL3 and CC by SA certificates license. That way you can just download the source code, look at it, modify it, make it your own, and learn on how we made it and maybe in ways that you can make it better yourself. That way it can kind of spark change and develops just like Linux did almost three decades ago. So a single sheet of metal goes into the machine and punches out each section, including the air vents, the cable docking, everything into a single sheet. Tries to use as much of that metal as possible to reduce waste, but we also recycle anything that's not used for the case or anything that's not just perfect for our customers to be as, as environmentally as possible. This process usually takes 10 to 15 minutes to go through the sandblaster to remove any rough edges, anything that is not perfect. We also have a CNC machine to go through the metal and everything. We also have the bender. It's used to be it's a manual bender to bend the metal. If anyone has to stop by the booth to see how the smooth edges are around the Theo and everything, that's used to make those unique curves that are just at an exact degree perfect. It uses a foot peg on the bottom to help push the metal around to curve it. Also, it uses lasers, a laser line to make the bend line as straight as possible to remove any imperfections. So everything that involves humans in the warehouse, they do the case assembly, the power coding that's all done by hand in its special room. Any finishing touches, and QA check, everything's built by hand in the factory as poss where possible. And you can see kind of all different parts and everything that makes the Theo before it's power coded on the right side there. Just a bare metal after a sandblast and, put through, and after being going through the punch hole. And everything that's lined up there and being put together by hand, that would be a case being built. So as you can see, everything is itemized with a barcode scanner. That way we can make sure everything, if it has a 32 gigs of RAM, an RTX 3060 GPU, everything's individually scanned to make sure every build is as perfect as humanly possible. Try to remove any human error out of there. So we'll be going through the actual build itself after everything's been pulled out of the catalog. We start with the Theo I.O. top case, bottom case, and CPU shroud, depending on the CPU and the how the wiring, GPU brace and drive cage. If you've been by the booth, the drive cage is wired up to show for where you would put the 2.5 inch drives in. Depending on the Theo model, there might be two of those, one of them. There also might be a U2 drive bay for those faster drives that communicate over PCIe versus just SATA and everything's built in there. It's screws to make, screwdriver to make sure everything's tight, not gonna move, everything's firm. So Theo IO cage, it's used for both thermal control, data control, for you can easily slide in your drives in there without having to mess around cables, anything you just, and the Theo comes with all the screws you need to put the drives in, and there's even guardrails by there, by that cage, so you can easily slide it in there without having to fiddle on with any screws, any loose ends, as easy as possible. One of the great things with this case design is that we can easily control how much thermals are rolling around by making that CPU duck directly airflow and the placement of just all the fans. Even a slight centimeter or millimeter can make a big difference in performance. So everything's controlled precisely. One of the main points is we want customers to get as much performance as possible and reduce thermal headway on those components. With the Theo IO, information is getting pro from the OS, motherboard, all that information to make those curves as efficient as possible, 
but not sound like a Category 5 hurricane in your room. We also check out, use simple tools, open source tools to check the performance to make sure those components are being pushed as hard as possible, but not make all that fan noise and keep performant without getting that bottleneck of performance. Using GP burner and stress testing cool like stress NG. The CPU duct is directly connected to the back of the case to make sure airflow is as efficient as possible. There's a couple different, for this is the mega, so there's a couple fans right by that area to pull out all that air and push in whatever it needs to keep the system as cool as possible without hitting any of those limitations or down clocking this hardware. Even a slight movement can make a good difference or affect it negatively. So it has to be exactly precise. We also built our own sound cube booth, kind of looks like a Rubik's cube, to put the Theo in there to make sure though any noise from the factory affecting our testing and make it as soundproof as possible to make individual tweaks to those fan curves because we won't be hearing that in the factory area. So we want to make sure any isolated sound is removed the from the equation. You'll also notice a couple of the clever air holes is the very back is the Unix Epoch. On the side there is the three celestial bodies and we also have little rockets on the side but those are like little, those are very clever air holes to improve that thermal compound, but we wanted to add a little bit of fun to them. And there's on the mountains down there are actually Morse code for SY76 as well, right by the mountains. So those are just finished end products of what the Theo looks like at the top case after being handled with love. Now we're moving on to the launch. There was a few different designs that we tried out to see what felt just right. We tried different split bars. We tried the low profile MX switches. And then as you can see, we kind of got closer and closer to the finalized design. The main difference would be the, if you stop by the booth to see this launch, which will be there after this talk, on the very right, there will be extra to home, page up, page down, and keys on the right is missing from that bottom photo. So it took a bit of time just to find the right layout that we thought added the most efficiency to typing experience while still being useful to everybody as we can. So the launch cars with keycaps, switches, stabilizers for the left shift, and the two space bars of the split design, space bar design. Top chassis, PCB, bottom plate, feet, and magnetic lift. The bottom plate and the top chassis are all made in-house. And the current switches we offer are the Jade and the Royals. We're also going to be adding the pink, silent pink and silent brown. I don't think that video is going to work. <laughs> So at first we started putting in the switches manually by hand. There's 84 of them, so quite time consuming. So on the weekends we'd be having anyone come to the factory to help install switches based on the demand of the launch as a product. As, we, as everything got higher and higher demand, we needed a machine that would do that for us. So this would be a video if it would work would be a video showing just that machine sorting out the switches, lining up just perfect and then stamping them in there automatically without any human interaction into there, which would sped up the process by a great fold. And before, after that, the PCB is installed, but by hand, we have to check, make sure every single pin is individually lined up to just make that PCB go in there perfectly. Everything works as it should. We also make sure, because the launch has a USB hub built into it, we place USB flash drives to make sure all the data speeds are as they should to both 2.0 flash drives and 3.0 and make sure those speeds map to spec. 
to make sure those transfer speeds are as they should before they even go any before the product goes anywhere. We also have our Selma machine to the center. The key launch keyboard is put there, and it pushes it moves the keyboard up down a little bit to the end to the left and right and blows air to make sure that the switches aren't overly sensitive. So if you put your finger ever so slightly on there by just a millimeter, it won't be activated. And if there's any, we replace them to make sure it passes that test. And the next mach machine on the right there is the Nelson. So they're all named after Simpson Cares. It pushes all the switches at once multiple, multiple, multiple hundreds of times to make sure that they come back and they're not sticking at all. And if there's any, we replace those, run it through the test as many times as we need to make sure they come without those issues. So the, one of the interesting and most important products, part of it is since this Mark launch configurable keyboard would be the keyboard configurator. This software we wrote ourselves, you can edit each layer on the keyboard, there's four in total. And you can also configure the, lay, the LEDs as well. So there's a few different options. They're not all shown there. But you can map for my keyboard, I don't use the escape, the caps lock. So I changed it to the escape key, which we ship with an extra larger escape key that fits that spot. So I changed in the keyboard configurator. Also changed the, you can also change the escape key I did here to access layer three, to switch to layer three. And I laid, mapped a numpad there to make a replacement for that. This is available. We wanted to make it as widely available as possible as a launch. So it's available Windows, Mac, and Linux first class. Now these, these settings also are written directly to the keyboard. So you can move them. Once you make the configuration, you can move it to any device you want that can interpret like I was using a Chromebook just to connect it to. And it kept all the keyboard configurations on the device itself. You can also change the keyboard ar all range out if you don't like QWERTY. If you want to use the Vorac, have at it. You can do it. That's not very useful. Those would have been videos showing the keyboard being used and changing things. Oh, it is. Let me just go into that. There we go. Now we're up to the firmware section. The firmware is handled on the launch by FWPD. So it's any distro that supports that firmware update method can easily get firmware updates. So you're not limited to Pop or Ubuntu. You can use anything. I've changed mine on Arch a couple times. You can also run it updated on NixOS, various distros, whatever one supports it. And let's see. And now we're to the technical documentation part. And just the links. So we have quite a few minutes for any questions. Q and A, I got them up there. It looks like we have one. I do not know when that will be. Uh, Miles, we have a question for the Theo style desktop laptop. Uh, that's a tall order, yeah. Huh? <laughs> that's the next step. That's the next step now that we have Theo as a starting point, launch. Now we've n nailed down manufacturing and the keyboard experience, and that's the next step. I don't know when it'll be, but it is the next step. Anybody else? The Tesla of laptops. <laughs> that would be the Note 7, wouldn't it? Anything else? Any other questions? The Theo line? Yeah. Base Theo line, there's a single PCI by six slot for a GPU and a single Theo IO cage for four M.2 2.5 inch drives. Theo major goes up to two of those drive bays, so you have eight 2.5 inch drives total. There's another by 16 slot 
They make us pretty similar to that. I think there's another configuration that you can do on that for GPU-wise. Massive is probably where you're going to notice the biggest difference. Mega also has the four, can fit four GPUs into it. Massive's kind of a server grade motherboard, so it's kind of like I want a server, but I want to be able to have it in my room. So those are big. The Mega also, the Massive also has the four, a four U.2 drive bay in there as well as the two, eight M.2, 2.5 inch drives in total. So Massive has the two, has four. <laughs> Mass, massive has eight 2.5 inch drives and a sync and four U.2 drives in that form factor, so they're communicating over PCIe faster. Yes. There's a couple of different varieties. It's mostly gigabyte. There's a ASUS board, I think, which is used in the massive. It's a standard motherboard. There are, we do have a custom firmware in there with default configurations, such as turning on the emulation, the virtualization options as well. So there's just enable out of the box. Also make sure SMP profile is turned on so you can get all the higher clock speeds. The, hot, the keys are hot swappable. Uh, they are north facing LEDs. Mel <laughs> Uh, System76 tactile malform when? Uh, so it, it, yeah, it was died in the, before entering. Any other questions? On the launch or the Theo? So the firmware on the launch is QMK firmware, so it's open source. We have a fork on GitHub, but you, I have upstream on mine, and it works fine because we open, sh we push to upstream our our code for the launch to upstream on QMK, so it's in the repository. I believe it's something else based. It's not UFI for the for the launch. The Theo firmware, it's closed firmware for the moment. There's not a whole lot of new generation motherboards. There was like one of recent time that had core boot on it, but I think it's just a DDR4 and the DDR5. I've I've definitely seen a lot of demand and asked for that. I don't have anything I can share or anything I know about at the moment. <laughs> I think that's it. Any other other go on, go on, place. I don't know if they've decided on the screen size just yet. I just seen at least one for right now as the beginning, but I beyond that, I don't know yet. Nothing else. So the switches on the launch are Kali box switches, so anything that'll fit that pin pattern will go on there. They're hot swappable. We for the desktop, it's both AMD and G and NVIDIA. It kind of depends on what vulnerability and stuff. We go all the way up to RTX four, uh, not four thousand, the ATX four thousand for like machine learning people want to use those. All the way down to either GT ten thirty for the lower end stuff or RX five fifty, RX six sixty six six hundred XC stuff like that. So it's all over the board. Yes. I've not heard of anything, so I don't know for sure. Yeah, the videos I've seen of it is very rare leak stuff. Like, they're not supposed to be recording it. <laughs> uh, 
I have not seen the discussions of which one it's going to pick. I have not seen that one just yet. We should share the questions over there too. For the desktops, it's our updater. I know there was work on messing around with uh, FWB capsules in the possible future, but nothing set. But I know they're messing with the capsules and see how they work and stuff to possibly offer it. Uh, I I don't have any plans to share. I know there's they're definitely watching Risk Five and AMD and uh, ARM stuff. We're definitely keeping an eye on that. I think that's it. Questions? <laughs> All right, I'm gonna send the feed.